the what a sweat that was. I thought we were done. Dave's calling his wife. Maybe Ivy will heat up in the last couple hours. Opens the button. What will Garrett do with Ace Nine suited? He's gonna three bet. His favorite player growing up. And it's a large one. We are playing 200, 400, 800 with a $1,600 straddle. Folds around to Phil Ivy on the button. He opens it up with the pocket sixes, which is perfectly fine and standard. Over to Garrett in the third blind. So there's still one player yet to act. With the ace, nine of clubs, I think you can either call or three bet. I definitely love three betting from out of position. But if you three bet here, playing very deep stacks, what are we playing here? Something like 300 effective big blinds deep, counting the straddle, $437,000 deep. You definitely want to three bet very, very big, as Garrett does. This is a spot where a lot of people really mess up. When Ivy makes it 5,400, they instead three bet to something like 15,000. Well, Ivy's going to call it almost everything in position very deep stacked. So the way you put him in a much more difficult scenario is to re-raise very, very large, but a good, strong, mostly linear range. And I think Ace-9 suit is a perfectly fine hand to three bet when we are playing very deep stacked because it can make the nut flush. Turns out that's a pretty good hand out of position deep stacked. So I love Garrett's three bet. Let's see what Ivy does. Facing the large three bet, I think Ivy only has one option and that is to call. A lot of people in this spot may think, well, he re-raised me pretty big. I guess I should just get out of the way. But the problem is, is you're putting in 20,000 effective to try to potentially win 410,000 more when you happen to flop a very strong hand. So they have incredible implied odds in this scenario, about 20 to one. Whenever you're getting 20 to one implied odds in position with any pair, you want to see the flop. It would be a blunder to fold here. Some people also may decide to re-raise to find out where they stand, but absolutely not. That is not a good strategy with small pairs and any good, strong, implied odds hand. So call, see the flop, and go from there. I realize $20,000 more is a lot, but it's all relative. For, for five hours. Good flop for sixes. Ivy has the range advantage here. Seen this movie before where Garrett bets 15K on the flop and then 300K on the river. Jack 5-5 five five flop gives Garrett nothing. That's not gonna stop him. He goes for a small continuation bet, which is definitely reasonable. Over to Ivy, and I think he only has one option, right? I mean, in this scenario, he is getting excellent odds. He's in position. You just gotta call and go from there. I mean, it's not a great spot. You could certainly be absolutely crushed. Your opponent's definitely drawing live, but you have to understand, pot odds exist. Ivy does not need to realize all that much equity in this spot, and he could easily have the best hand. So, he has to call and go from there, although I realize calling against a somewhat maniacal player like Garrett, even in position, is always a rough spot because he's pretty inclined to just bet the turn and blast the river, and then, of course, your sixes are going to be in a pretty nasty spot. Let's see what develops on the turn. Catch an ace or a nine. a good check tells the story the turn is the four of clubs and this is a pretty rough one for garrett to be fair a lot of the turns will be rough for garrett on the jack five five with no backdoor flush draw but this is a spot where when garrett is determining which hands to bluff with he definitely wants to have some equity here either with some sort of straight draw or flush draw and he has none of that in this situation so i think the players to just check it's an annoying spot. I know Garrett wants to get in there and blast hard against Ivy, but this is not the time. And he checks. Ivy gonna pot control? Or is he gonna protect his hand and risk 
30. The dreaded Garrett Adelstein check raise. Ivy is an old school legend, and Garrett has said many times that he has always wanted to play against him. Well, he has his chance today, right now. Who is the most famous player that you have ever played with? And more importantly, how did it go? Did you win or did you lose? Let me know in the comment section down below. The pot is $84,000. And this is a spot where I think a lot of people make the mistake of just checking behind because they really, 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 really don't want to get check raised. But Ivy correctly realized that in this situation, he has a lot of super duper nut hands with a jack that can very confidently bet and never fold to a raise. And when that is the case, you get to bet very wide for thin value and protection as Phil Ivy does here. He goes for a third pot bet, a small bet in relation to the pot, but it certainly nudges the pot up just a little bit and gets a lot of protection from all of Garrett's random overcards like he has in this situation. And whenever Phil Ivy does have a jack, he doesn't really care if Garrett comes along with whatever because Garrett's gonna be drawing thin or dead. This is a great bet by Ivy. And I actually discuss this scenario in my brand new advanced tournament course that is being released right now at pokercoaching.com. It's a very long, very extensive course discussing all sorts of scenarios that don't come up all the time, but situations you definitely want to be aware of. I discuss when you should be betting gigantic, when you should be betting tiny. We also have an extensive section on ICM spots and also heads up play. So make sure you check it out right now at pokercoaching.com slash cyberweek. Let's see if Garrett decides to get overly out of line. One for the goat. This is a spot where I'm sure many YouTube viewers are thinking Garrett should raise. He'll be able to make Ivy fold his sixes, which is probably true. But you have to realize Phil Ivy has a pretty good poker face. And Garrett does not know that Ivy has pocket sixes. Ivy could easily have a jack. And if he has a jack, he's never folding. So this is a spot where Garrett really cannot get out of line all that often at all. And he does the wise thing of folding and respecting his elders. That's gonna be it for today. If you enjoyed this video, click the like and subscribe button below. Also, if you want to learn a whole lot more about poker, I know I certainly learned a lot in the process of making my brand new advanced tournament course head over to pokercoaching.com slash cyberweek right now. I'll talk to you next time.